the uh, training call. How's everybody doing this morning? Is everybody up and rolling? Becky Simmons, you look like you're up and rolling. About to sell another tap out again. Congratulations. Thanks. So how long did it take you to cap at EXP? Three months. So three months, 2.7 million. Now you're at 100%. Yeah, until July of next year. Awesome. Awesome. Well, congratulations. And I'm staring Ron and Ubel's suit, getting a pre-K person ready, so bear with me. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. All right, so everybody, uh, Becky, go ahead and mute your mic. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I see John here. Hold on here. Nicole, Michael Nix, Chris O'Neill, uh, Joanne Legacy, Christy, Denny, Austin. Austin, wait till you, wait till you hear what I'm going to teach you this morning, bro. Unbelievable stuff. Austin, uh, awesome agent out in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, Scottsdale area. Um, HB Thompson, just kind of find a hat maker. Wait till you wait till you hear what I'm about to teach y'all this morning. It's unbelievable. Um, Leanne, Adam, Ann, just seeing all the awesome agents coming on here from all over the country. So guys, uh, let me let me just first of all start off by saying that. These conventions that EXP puts on, uh, I get it. There, you know, it's it is an expense to attend these things. There's there's no question, but it's also the amount of referral networks and relationships that you're building with these other agents across the nation. The value of it, um, it is unbelievable. The training that every time I go, I learn. Um, you know, like what I'm about to teach you guys, I, I am telling you, I'm going to record this. We're going to really, I'm going to really start getting intentional about recording these trainings. So you guys, I want you guys on here, but also to archive so you can make notes. Of the ones when you bring agents on to EXP guys, we have to get these people selling houses. We have to teach them how to do this. Okay. And, uh, what I learned, uh, uh, what I what I learned this week about farming a neighborhood is absolutely a game changer. Okay, so um, I just want to welcome everybody to the to the Tuesday morning training. Remember, we do this every Tuesday, guys. If you are a new agent or you are an agent that you feel like income wise you have to step this thing up a notch, I'm going to tell you. To me, it's not even an option that you be on here. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense because we are literally, a lot of times I turn it loose and we let the agents, I mean, right now, Tim Hollanden's on here. He's a diamond at Remax, million dollar a year guy. Uh, Ann Santa, 25, $30 million agent. I'm just looking around, Joanne Legacy, top producer. All these people that are in this company that get on, Alex Montago is on here uh, now. Mike Rosenboom, uh, another guy that does $15 million, $10 million worth of business. All these guys get on these calls on Tuesday mornings, and we just share everything. Like, here's the playbook. Here's, you know, the secret playbook from Bill Belichick. And I'm telling you guys, that is the key, is being around on, you know, the training we're doing is relevant to yesterday. It's not relevant. I mean, things are changing. Zillow and the Flex program and how they're going and moving into a brokerage that has, uh, uh, you know, they're not even taking payments for zip codes. They're just going to pay referrals out to agents. All these things are changing and moving. And if you're not on this call every week, I just think you're making a colossal business decision. So I want you to block out Tuesday morning, 8.30. Now, here's another. I'm putting this on you guys, okay? I want you guys. There's 33 agents on here right now, okay? You know who you are. I want you to make darn sure that you have at least two agents that you remind to get on this thing next week. Two agents. You text them and say, listen, that training last week Jay did, was freaking phenomenal. You've got to be on this every week. So we have to we have to have everyone step up as leaders 
and lead the way so exp takes over this industry from a sales standpoint more signs in yards more sales our numbers are staggering how fast we're growing but i just want to throw i want to throw jet fuel on the fire okay all right so guys welcome this morning to the exp weekly sales training i usually make this a round robin and i usually open it up for questions so this is a place where on tuesday morning I'll say, hey, who's having some issues? And then we end up, you know, doing the problem solving and solving their problems. We're not doing that this week. This week, uh, I am going to train on farming. And while I was in um, at the convention, okay, um, hang on, I'm finding my notes here. Hang on a second. Um, while I was at the at the uh, at the convention, I met a guy named Dave that was another, I don't even know his last name. My brain is blank, but he's out of Los Angeles, California, and he's been in the business 30, 30 years, 20, 20, 30 years. Okay. Been in the business a long time. He was a very uh, successful agent in Los Angeles for years, uh, was a buyer of, of, of real estate leads. Um, you know, he, he'd done a lot of stuff. Okay. But about eight years ago, he said, man, I'm not going to be paying all this money for leads anymore. I'm just going to, I'm going to farm and create my own leads. Okay. I'm going to create my own leads through farming a neighborhood. He had lived in this neighborhood and, uh, and this was literally at an EXP breakout where the EXP agent was sharing and training us. And he lived in this neighborhood he had almost never sold a house in, okay? And he said, well, how am I going to, and, he, and the neighborhood, now some of my notes, guys, are maybe a little bit, like I took these notes in the training, so I've got to kind of decompress some of them. But I want to say his neighborhood, let me see how many, I'm trying to figure out how many houses were in the neighborhood. I want to say 1,500 houses or 2,000 houses, okay? Now, he tells people, if you're going to farm a neighborhood, farm a neighborhood that has as many houses as you possibly find a big neighborhood, a neighborhood that, um, you know, has, you know, 1,500, 2,000 houses. You know, some of you guys live in smaller towns and that's not possible. So go down to the you know 500 or 700 houses. Find the biggest neighborhoods that you can. Now, he started off, he wants to encourage agents to farm a neighborhood they live in, okay? And I know that's not possible for some of y'all. So if you, if you don't live in the neighborhood that you're farming, um, let's just find a neighborhood that you're real familiar with, a neighborhood that's close to you, a neighborhood that, that you have some connection with something of that nature, but it would be good to, uh, to do this in wherever you do live, you need to farm your neighborhood this way. Okay. So what he does is, is he has, he has a series of things that he does every year, every week, and he is extremely consistent. Now, the first thing he does is he does a weekly book drive. Okay. And it's called a book drive. And what he does is, actually his neighborhood is 2,000 houses. So I'm looking at it now here. It's a 2,000 house neighborhood, okay? And what he does is, um, he goes around, and y'all y'all gotta understand, I'm looking at my notes. So, you know, I might be like, kind of spotty on this a little bit. He goes around on, let's see what day that is. On Thursdays, every week and picks up books that they don't want that and takes them to the local library and they and ha, and that way if you're done with a book and you want to donate it to the local library so he does he put out door hangers on the doors that say hey i'm dave johnson i'm i'm a, i'm a, i'm in the, i live in the neighborhood and i'm a local real estate agent and i'm going to be doing a book drive you know every and he goes by every week on Thursday and picks up books, okay? And they leave them on the door. Uh, they leave them on the door. Uh, he puts out 
okay, hang on a second. Let, let me, let me, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong here. He does 50 houses every week, okay, every week. He goes out and he puts door hangers on 50 of the houses. So he picks the, I, I, I've, I've got a bunch to tell you guys. So he only does 50 houses a week on the, uh, on the, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Y'all are like, damn, Jay, learn how to train people. Um, he knocks and hangs and puts out door hangers on a Wednesday, okay? And then the next week, he picks up the books. So, so get, get this straight. Wednesday, you go out, you pick 50 houses, you knock on the door. They, if they answer, you say, hey, I'm, I'm Chris O'Neill with EXP Realty. I'm doing a book drive. Just wanted to come by and let you know that next Thursday, I'm going to come around and, uh, and I'm going to, uh, you know, pick up any books and take them to the local library, uh, you know, next, next Thursday. So he knocks on a Wednesday, 50 doors. The next Thursday, he goes and picks up the books. And he does 50 houses every single week where he literally knocks on the door. The key to this is he's going with an ad value. He's showing that he's a good person, that he's doing something for the community, okay? And, and um, when he goes and picks up the books or when he gets a conversation going, you know, he tries to throw in, you know, you'd be shocked at what people would pay for, you know, what you, he, this was an actual dialogue he uses. He said, you'd be shocked at what some buyers would offer you for your house. And he said, a lot of times he'll get blowback on that statement, but he said, that's what I use. You'd be shocked. Uh, you'd be shocked at what some buyers would offer you for your house right now because the market's so hot. That is his script. Now he says he throws that in there kind of lightly when he's either asking them for the books or maybe he throws it in when he picks them up, what, whatever that is. Um, and then he, this is another thing in his script when he does his book drive. He says, a lot of people go, well, I'm not selling. He said, when they say that, you go, man, I don't blame you. I wouldn't sell either. You know, this is a great neighborhood, you know, and, and what, what that does is it disarms them. Yeah, I get it. You know, I, I don't blame you. This is a great neighborhood to live in, you know, but I really enjoyed uh, chatting with you. I really enjoyed getting to know you. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, I could get your name and phone number and put you on our you know, I do these updates where I send out when new houses sell or new houses go on the market in the neighborhood because it's all relevant to your value, what everything else around you sells. Would, would you mind if I, you know, kept you, uh, you know, informed on that and, and just tries to build a little bit of relationship? He said, look, if he, this is what he told me, okay? So 40 of y'all are listening, all right? 40 of y'all are listening. If you don't want haters in your neighborhood, don't try to farm the neighborhood. Okay. Did you, did y'all hear me? If you don't want some people in the neighborhood, the realtors that live in your neighborhood, your competitors, they're going to hate your guts. And he said, just about every realtor in my neighborhood, three years later, can't, they, they don't, they, they don't tell me to my face. They don't like me, but he knows they don't like me. But he goes, if you're worried about what people think of you and that you're not going to create some haters in your neighborhood or the woman that's mad because you knocked on her door or the woman that, you know, or the guy that's, you know, he goes, look, that is part of being a great farmer. So if you don't, if you have a problem with, you know, if you want to take over a neighborhood, this guy sells 33% of every house in his neighborhood now. Okay, let me put it to you. Actually, uh, 11, excuse me, 25%. Last year, he sold 11 out of 40 listings in his, ha in his neighborhood for over anywhere from 800 to a million and a half dollars. Okay, I'm gonna tell you, keep telling you how he does it. So y'all, I'm just trying to tell you, when you realize this is one thing he does, I still got eight more things that he does um, that are crazy. So the book drive. That's number one, okay? And he's trying to build relationships, maybe get a phone number, maybe just drop off a postcard with some comps, new houses that come up. All right, next thing is a yard sale event, okay? 
Now he'll try to do this, you know, a couple of times a year, not too much, but maybe a couple of times a year, maybe at the beginning of the summer and maybe at the end of the summer, he does a yard sale event. Okay. And at this event, he actually mails out 2000 postcards to his 2000 house farm. Okay. And on the postcard, it says something, and I'm actually supposed to be getting some of the dialogue back from him. So what I'll do is uh, I'll figure, I'll probably put it in mastermind or somewhere and get it to y'all uh, on some of his other materials. I don't have that yet. He just, we just got back from the convention, but he'll send out 2000 postcards that say, Hey, we're going to do a community yard sale. And I'm going to, um, you know, Dave with EXP Realty, and I'm going to be the one that promotes it all over social media. I'm going to put out all the signs. I'm going to literally do all of the work. All you guys need to do is on Saturday, uh, you know, I, I think he said he does that. Let me see here. He does that about six weeks before he does the yard sale. He gets the postcard out, okay? Um, and he says, look, six weeks from now, we're going to do a, a community yard sale. You know, if you'd like to participate, you know, give me a call. You know, he had 100 out of 2,000 houses say, hey, if you're going to promote it, we'll, 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 we'll put out a table in the, in the driveway and sell some of this crap. Um, and so he had a hundred people from his neighborhood say, yeah, we want to do that. So here was another thing he did. He said the morning of the garage, I said, yes, I had to work. He said, I literally, you know, put signs out. I promoted it on Facebook, you know, our community's garage sale. You know, I, I literally let everybody know that I was putting it out there very hardcore on social media. A lot of people start following me on social media in the neighborhood. I start to become that guy that's very involved with the community of the neighborhood. And he said, you know, people love it. Housewives love it. You know, it, it, it's just, it's generating a lot of, a lot of interest. And he said, but here's key. When the neighborhood, when, when, when the, when the yard sale starts, he buys box, uh, either six, six dozen uh, or a half a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts for a hundred boxes of, of a half dozen. And he goes to every single one of those yard sales and walks up and says, you know what? I'm so glad you participated, hands them a half a dozen donuts and starts looking at their stuff and tries to buy something for two, two or three bucks and, and build a relationship with them. And he said, it's just, it's money, it's money. And so that's the yard sale event. So you got book drive, yard sale, um, and then the next thing he did was a neighborhood watch. You know, he said, look, I'm going to create a neighborhood watch for our neighborhood. Okay. So then again, he sent out, you know, 2000 postcards and he said, Hey, if anybody would like to participate in a neighborhood watch for the neighborhood, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get you a sign you know, to put in your yard to say, because they had some people driving in the neighborhood and steal something out of a car. So that was kind of a hot point. So he said, you know what, I'm going to just lead the way and do a neighborhood watch. Now he did say that this ended up costing him some money. So what he did is he asked everybody, you know, to give him a text, you know, if they would like, you know, a neighborhood watch sign, you know, you know, a, a sign. So what he did is he went out and he ended up buying about a hundred signs. Okay. Cause a hundred people said, Hey, I want a neighborhood watch sign. So he bought the neighborhood watch sign and on the back, he, on the front of it, he put the neighborhood and neighborhood watch. This, this is watched by a neighborhood, right? On the back of the sign, he put Dave so-and-so with EXP Realty. So on the back of the sign that faces their house, they walk out and they see, and he just said, you know what, I'll just come by and put, put it in your yard and you can keep it out, put it out when you want, you know, and, and literally put it in the yard. I thought that was really cool. He said that cost him a little bit of money because it was like $9 a sign to do that. And he had 100 so that cost him 900 bucks. A lot of this stuff doesn't cost him much at all. He spent 11 grand to farm his neighborhood and his 
ROI was 387,000 in GCI. He created 387,000 in commissions off of $11,000 in cost. But he worked hard on it, okay? All right. The next one is open houses, okay? He said when you throw an open house in a neighborhood, okay? He said what he does is he does a hundred knocks around it. Okay, so let's just say, and I had to bump this back because I told him, I said, Dave, we're in the Bible Belt, you're in LA. Uh, you know, in this scenario for an open house, it's probably going to have to be on a Saturday to make this work in the Bible Belt because people go to church. So um, I said, on, on Wednesday, he goes around the house 100. He goes 50 houses this way and 50 houses this way from the actual house. And he knocks on the doors on Wednesday morning. He always knocks at nine o'clock in the morning. He always knocks at nine in the morning. He does, he, that's when he starts knocking and he ends when he ends, okay? But he knocks 100 doors on Wednesday. And he knocks and, he, and, he, and if, if they don't answer, he leaves some type of flyer or something or a door hanger or some type of thing behind if they don't answer. But he knocks on, on, on Wednesday, okay? And he says, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Dave with EXP Realty. Listen, your neighbor down the road uh, wanted me to invite you to an open house that we're doing. And the house is going on the market. Uh, it, we're putting it on, the, he usually tries to do this when the house first lists, okay? So it's like a launch open house. And he says, listen, we're listing this house at, you know, 105 Main Street, okay? And we're going to open it up to neighbors only from 12 to 1 on Saturday. So we're not going to have the general public in there from 12 to 1. And we're going to have a, a I'm going to have, it, it's going to be catered. And we're going to have food for you. The, the, uh, the, the, the neighbors, your neighbors wanted me to invite you. He always says, your, your neighbors wanted me to invite you. So it's almost like he's not inviting, the neighbors are inviting, okay? So he says, from 12 to 1, we're going to feed you, and it's only for the people that live in the neighborhood. It's not open to the public. So they feel like, I mean, you could do that with a wine and cheese. You know, if you said, hey, I'm doing a, you know, you could probably do the same type of thing with a wine and cheese on a Sunday and say, hey, I'm doing a wine and cheese that's only open for the, uh, the, the owners wanted to invite you on Sunday at one o'clock to two o'clock is a wine and cheese and the open house is from two to five, okay? So what you're doing is you're inviting them to a private uh, neighborhood, uh, neighbor only luncheon or wine and cheese. But here's what he said, it's magical. He said, you know, you gotta look at it. When you go and invest money in food and you've got this investment, okay? You know, if you just did it for the neighbors, he said he's had some where they only had two or three neighbors show up and he's got all this food, right? He said, well, the good part about it is when they leave at one o'clock, I've got a one to four open house and he does one to four. He does 12 to one for the lunch, one to four open to the public. So he's, he's doing a, a basically like I do two to fives, okay? You guys, don't do two hour open houses. That's just ridiculous. Who's got time? to drive and set up and put out, you know, I always say when you do an open house, put out 20, 30 signs. Why would you just do an open house for two hours if you went through all that trouble? Makes no sense, okay? Do a three hour open house. In this case, you know, your lunch is from 12, you know, uh, from 12 to one on Saturday and your open house is from one to four or two to five or, you know, just kind of using that. But he's doing a neighborhood lunch for the, an hour before he opens up to the public and the leftover food, he just gives it to the, to the general public. So he's not wasting it. Does that make sense? So he said, you're buying that food for the neighbors because you're farming that neighborhood and they think you're just feeding them, but the leftover food feeds the general public. So I thought that was very cool. Uh, here's another thing that he was doing. Um, I don't really, uh, he, it's called the National Night Park. Hold on a second. It's some holiday. 
it's some holiday that, that, that they have out there, some national park day or something. And what he does is he gets an ice cream truck and lets the- Because uh, they, they told me that at that other realtor, you're her partner. And I'm not saying that bad about Ann. Hello, but somebody's got their mic I on. I would go work an open house for them. Right. But it was hey, who's got their mic on? Sorry, somebody's talking to a friend and mic on. Sorry about that. Um, Sorry. Okay. Y'all muted. Thank you. Um, yes. The national Amber said it. What is it? The net, the national night out, the national night out. Amber, do you want to tell me what that is? And I'll, and I'll explain to everybody what he does on that. What is the national night out day? What is that Amber? Okay. Amber's not able to talk. All right. So what he does is he gives. Hey, I just wanted to share with you the national night out is like, get your community together. It's like a neighborhood watch thing and okay. you do it. The police are involved and it's usually like a certain, seems like it's a certain night in September or first part of October. It says August 4th. Yeah. August 4th on my notes. Oh, okay. Okay. I knew it was somewhere Yeah. Sorry, around. Jay. We've just had ours here. I think it varies possibly from place to place. We just had ours the other day, but my phone was too far away for me to unmute it. But it's what she just said. No, All the community yeah. kind of comes together and everybody goes out and police are involved. It's kind of like a community awareness, community watch, know your neighbor sort of situation from what I've kind of gathered. Well, he goes around and makes these tickets and he, he gives free ice cream at the park, okay? But he goes out and actually leaves door hangers and knocks and says, hey, here's a free ticket for the kids, for the national. Uh, I mean, he is a ground game guy, guys, but he makes a lot of money doing what we're talking about, okay? Um, so the national night out day is August 4th, and he does free ice cream at the park, okay? And does cheap ice cream, right? Jay, they actually have a website. Um, it's, a, it's a police community action type deal that they have. I went ahead and put that the link in the uh, chat. Okay, thanks, Chris. Thanks, man. All right, so then um, he. This is another brilliant one he does. Unbelievable. He hires a professional photographer. Now remember, he's farming a two thousand place neighborhood. Okay, so you got to get this to where you know. I mean, he's hiring a professional photographer to do a doggy photo day or you know cats or whatever right and he sends out the the door hangers or the postcards one or the other okay you can do postcards you can do door hangers whatever you want to do you can go hang them yourself on the door or you can put it through the mail but he does he had to get an, a, a permit to do it but people would bring their dog down and they would he would have the photographer take photos of the dog for free and, and P said, dude, people just flipped out over it. People flipped out over it. And he said, what he did is, is in his neighborhood, he had to get a permit. He said, but that's an LA thing. You know, he goes, probably in middle America, you don't have to go get a permit to hire a photographer to take pictures of dogs. Um, but um, he would take the photos, okay? He would take the photos uh, of the dog and then he would have the guy print out one photo and he would just do a magnet calendar and take it by their house. So when, you know, obviously the photographer would, uh, would, uh, would send the photos directly to the owners, right? He wasn't in charge of getting the photos back to the owners, but he did a dog fridge magnet with his name on it and basically set up, here's, here's a picture of your dog, you know, to remind them that he was the one that paid for it. And it's a calendar with the dog on it. He just stuck them to the, it wasn't like he had to individually print them. He just stuck it to the, to the magnet. So he's just all about creating those ad values to the neighborhood. And he did say, he said, I'm telling you, Jay, the, the people, the other realtors in my neighborhood are jealous. They don't want to do the work. This is my pet peeve guys. This is my pet peeve. I've been saying this. I'm not trying to be ugly. Okay. I even had some of the bigger agents say, Jay, you're too hard. You're, you're just a little too harsh on agents on your trainings, okay? Let, let, me, let me explain something to you. 
I have to be because there's too many people getting in this industry that are too lazy and they think that selling real estate is easy. It's not easy. And if I tell you that, then I'm a liar. The one thing I'm not is I am going to tell you the truth, okay? And so if you want to win here and you want to be a top producer, you can take a – guys, I am telling you, I don't care how big of a realtor you are. If you will do some of the stuff that I'm talking about right now, you can freaking dominate your market. Because people don't care about how great a realtor you are or how many houses you sold. They care about how much you care about them. If you implement something like this, they're gonna, they don't care who's the biggest and the baddest. They care about who's giving back to the community, who's giving something to them, who's taking a picture of their dog. They don't care that Gary Ashton has billboards all over town. He's not taking pictures of their dogs, okay? All right. Sorry, I got all fired up there. I love you guys. Bear with me. Okay, this is a cool one. He does a scholarship program for the neighborhood. Now, this costs him, this actually cost him a $1,000 scholarship. So it cost him a grand. And it also cost him 19 Staples gift cards for 50 bucks. So if you look at that, what is that, another 500? Yeah, another, no, that's 19, what is that? Yeah, that's another, that's another thousand in gift cards, okay? So this cost him two grand. All right, this is a little bit more expensive one, okay? But he did a Ross neighborhood, because his last name's Ross, uh, neighborhood scholarship program, okay? And what he did is five months prior to giving away the scholarship, he sent out postcards and he said, look, I'm giving a thousand dollar scholarship to a, a high school senior that's going to college and there's no GPA requirements. The only two requirements are, we want you to write a, 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 a one page letter about what it was like growing up in this neighborhood and what you did to add value to the people, other people in the neighborhood and some of the memories you had in the neighborhood. What did you do to bring some value? What did you do to help some other people in the neighborhood? write a one page and we're going to give a thousand dollar scholarship away. Well, he got 20 applicants that mailed him, you know, the applicants. And one of my questions was, well, man, that's tough because uh, you know, you're going to have 19 losers and one winner. Right. And, and he said, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing with that. He said, we, we sent a letter out to all 19 people that didn't win and give them a $50 Staples gift card and said, hey, you know what? Your essay was great. Um, you know, we, we decided there was another candidate that you're just as deserving, but we, we went with another candidate. But here's a $50 gift card for your school supplies to Staples, okay? So anybody that submitted one, he ended up rewarding them with a gift card. Well, the le one girl won, right? And... Um, Basically, this was what was cool. I was kind of thinking, man, you know, you're really kind of, you know, you're, you're choosing one over 20. So he got a call from a lady one day and, he, and she said, hey, I want you to come look at our house. It was one of the bigger houses in the neighborhood, one of the biggest. And it was a $2.7 million listing. And so Dave walks in and he, he's at the listing appointment and he's up. Uh, He's, he's at the listing appointment and he's, you know, doing his thing. And all of a sudden the daughter walks down the staircase and she looks at him and she goes, you're Dave. I mean, even the daughter knew this realtor, right? <laughs> you're Dave. You're the guy all over the neighborhood. You're like, you own this neighborhood. And he goes, man, people literally think, man, do you own a bunch of houses? And I mean, they're like, I mean, he said, dude, I've just taken the neighborhood over. And he said, and nobody, he said, once I started doing it, nobody's going to try to copy me. He goes, that's the other thing. If you are the one that starts it and you go do all this in your neighborhood, the biggest agent in your neighborhood is not going to copy you because then they're the copycat. He said, so I don't even have any of these haters trying to compete with me anymore because I beat them. And so he said, the girl walks down the stairs and, and, uh, are y'all, hey, if y'all are liking this training, 
give me a thumbs up, man. If y'all, if y'all, if y'all are believing that EXP will outtrain any real estate company on the planet, give me a little thumbs up in your camera there. All right. All right. Good deal. Good deal. I just got excited there. All right. So, so the girl walks down the stairs. Okay. And this is the collaboration, dude, all these agents and all these classes at the convention, you guys need to come to the conventions because they're literally training and, 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 and you're meeting these people and you're, you're building these relationships and everybody's giving away all their trade secrets. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So girl walks down the stairs. And she goes, you're Dave, the realtor. And the little girl goes, and, and Dave's like, yeah. And he, he, she goes, well, I submitted my, my application for that scholarship program, and I didn't win. And Dave was like, he was just like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to say? You know, like, he was like, well, you know what, I, 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 you know, tell me what your name was. And, and she said, you know, Becky or whatever. And she, she, he goes, well, I remember I read every one of those submissions and I do remember your submission and I thought it was amazing we just had to pick one the little girl goes well yeah well I do appreciate your Staples gift card and she walks off and the girl walks off and the lady looks at Dave and said to said to Dave she goes you know what when I got that in the mail I realized that we knew a lot of other realtors in this neighborhood we do but you are more focused on giving back. And she goes, we, I, my, I told my husband, when we sell our house, we will not interview another agent other than Dave. Guys, he does a banana bed, bread drop. He goes and gets banana bread and drops it. And he, he gets fresh eggs and he drops it. This guy does this every year. Nobody is getting in that neighborhood. He did 11 out of 40 houses in the farm. He made $387,000 a year in the farm, in his one farm, his neighborhood. It cost him $11,800 for the postage, the, the you know scholarship, his cost. And y'all wanna hear something else that's amazing? He double-ended nine out of those 11 houses he made 6% on. He double-ended them because he absolutely puts out that kind of effort. I want to throw a couple more things in here, guys. Mike Rosenboom does an amazing training on uh, his movie night for the kids. I think that's another good thing. Dave didn't do it, but the movie night for the kids where you go and you, you know, rent a screen and a projector and you have movie under the stars, kind of an event for people to bring their kids to watch Star Wars or whatever. Um, that's another good idea for the farm. Uh, also, you can do a Santa Claus, you know, where you have Santa Claus come to the park or an event. We do the movie event uh, at the movie theater. Every Bye, Vikram. Mute your, mute your mic, Slavlana. Mute your mic. Oops, sorry. Um, so. Guys, I'm going to open this up now. This is going to be recorded, and I am going to make sure that you guys get this out to everybody, okay? I'm probably going to get it recorded, and I'm going to send it out in the text messages in a, in a YouTube tomorrow because I think this is such a good idea for our agents. So I want to open this up for other ideas, okay? Um, I want to save questions till the end. Does anybody else have any other great farming ideas to add to this amazing uh, farming idea that we have here. Yeah, hey Jay, I'm looking into, uh, uh, Mike Rosenboom here, I'm looking into doing, you know, a lot of neighborhoods are, I've seen some, they have those uh, those book boxes where you just, you know, you you there's a box and it just, you know, you neighbors leave a book, take a book. Um, but I thought that'd be a cool thing and I haven't, exactly thought about how to you know in you know include any advertising or if i need to include advertising one way that you in, include advertising is when you are the one who's promoting something that's for the neighborhood you get you get a lot of credit for it and like you've been talking about you add value to the neighborhood yep. um that they know you and the what i wanted to say too because I've, I've done a lot of listing appointments in neighborhoods where i've done farming this guy's killing it 
But the other thing you need to understand is that they already, you know, they already know you and they already like you. So then you just have to get them to trust you that you're halfway decent. Um, but they really already want to list with you. So I, when you're, it, it's a different kind of marketing because you're, you're yep. warming up that lead to such an extreme extent before you ever walk in the door. And that, that feels really good. But yeah, doing some sort of book box thing, I'm going to have one built and put in the neighborhood just because I think it makes our neighborhood cooler, you know, to have a, one of those book sharing things. You know, and I, and I, were you on at the beginning of the, of the training when I talked about the book drive? Yeah, he did the book drive. He was doing the book yeah. drive, which was really cool too. And I would say about that, if you don't care about reading, then don't do that. Like find something that you really, really love. I mean, I, I wouldn't say don't do it, but I mean, it, he, he probably reads a lot of books. And so, you know, it's, it's the magic of it isn't the exact thing you do. It's just that you're doing something for the yep. community. Yep. So anything no, you can I mean, pretty much think of yep. will work. Yeah, I think that's great. Go ahead. I thought about um, doing a, like a cut -a -thon. I know that sounds so random, but, you know, I do hair and I can advertise it and show that, you know, this is a way of EXP um, agent owned based is going to be given back to our community to um, donate, you know, four hours of haircuts. Do you think that's dumb? Um, no, I think it's cool. Um, I think anything's cool, you know, like just do something. Um, um, no, I don't think it's dumb. I, I, I'm just trying to think of how you would do that. Well, I'm I don't, totally know, how, market, I don't know how, I don't know if that's as scalable as I don't, don't, I don't, maybe unless you're having like a, a window of time, but I don't, I don't know. That might be a little harder to, to, to do, right? Because what, you don't what about, what, a, what about if you set it up, um, not just you know, yeah. a free, you know, four hours of haircuts. What if you do like $5 a haircut, all profits go to one of your local shelters or something like that to where you're not just adding value to your neighborhood, but you're adding value to somewhere else too. Brilliant That's idea. Really good. Brilliant. Yeah, and you know what, at that point, what you could do is, if you're going to farm that neighborhood, see, man, this is why it's cool. We're all brainstorming and talking and figuring out. So why don't you do a $5 haircut? All proceeds go to, uh, you know, a, a cause. And you're only going to offer this because you live in the neighborhood. So, so you say, hey, you know what? I live in this neighborhood. I'm only doing this for people in the neighborhood. You do a door. But I don't live in a neighborhood. That's what's bad. I live in a okay. small town. Okay, so Chris, help me brainstorm this. Chris, Chris O'Neill. Bring the, bring the entire town in on it. I mean, if you're in a small town, uh, what size is your town? We're talking 10,000? No, I think about 24. About 24,000? <laughs> yeah. You target the inner area, you know, where your most populated areas are, um, maybe with a, a, just in the garage sale groups. I'm sure there's a big town group or something they might have. And then do it, see if you can't get set up and do it downtown. I have a suggestion. Okay. Go ahead, Gloria. I would do, I would do uh, the discounted haircuts for back to school. You could, you could, you know, parlay that in with some other back to school things, but that way you'd be able to do something awesome, help a lot of people out, and everybody wants their kids to get a haircut before school starts. And hey, one more suggestion as well. So, why not bring in the community and let them vote on where the proceeds go? That way the community has a voice in where their money is going and like whoever has the highest votes of, you know, uh, nonprofits or charities, that's, that's where the money will go. But then that gets also the community involved and gets more people excited about it. One and other idea. A way to capture their information. Hey guys, I have one more idea. If you have a neighborhood that you specifically would like to farm, and I just thought of this because of a situation I'm dealing with. I'm similar. My, I don't live in a neighborhood. I live, you know, kind of more a little, not rural, but just not in a neighborhood. So, but you could pick somebody in the community that needs it, that you've heard of their story or their situation um, that lives in that neighborhood or pick a neighborhood that you can find somebody who needs the help and then say that the proceeds are going there. Like, I have a friend who just lost her husband. He's 30 years old, didn't wake up, just no reason. So, if I wanted to do something for that neighborhood, 
you know, we could donate all the funds specifically to them, especially with it coming up on the holidays and stuff like that. Great but idea. to find a family in need in that neighborhood and donate it to them, and that makes you part of that neighborhood even though you don't live there. Ooh, I love that. And, you I know, I, I like that. You're, you're finding something in the neighborhood that you're contributing to their neighborhood. So you're talking about, and I think that's great. Another thing is, and Becky kind of spurned this thought, you, you can take the same concept of neighborhood and apply it to the community. And Chris and, and a couple of people said that. So if you don't live in a neighborhood, I live on a farm here, you know, with 20 acres and we don't want to live in a neighborhood as well. So what I could do is say the Ridgetop community and I could do the same thing with a, with more focused on, Hey, I'm doing this for the Ridgetop community. So go ahead. Vicki Williams has a question. Go ahead, Vicki. Turn your mic on. Vicki, your mic's muted. There you go. Okay. I was just going to say, almost everybody knows a hairdresser, going back to the hairdresser thing. I think connected with a hairdresser at a salon, I live in a small town too, but I go to a small um, hair salon in Chapel Hill, the closest one to me. I would go in and talk to the girls there and advertise within the salon, put up the the flyers inside the salon so their customers see it and that way you're not mailing postcards or going door knocking you're advertising right where people already go to get their haircuts anyhow it's a great idea it's yeah. a great idea but there's nothing I'm wrong probably with gonna do that so do, do, you door knock? do you do some door knocking i don't i'm not i've never done it i've always been scared to but i'm going to break through that i'm going to do it no you know here's the thing vicky start off by just going and knocking on like like the mind yeah i think it's a mindset thing if you look at it based on like like, like seriously i'm i hope there's 47 agents listening right now some of y'all are, are don't want to do it or you're thinking i could never do that i want you to think of it like you're going looking to to make somebody's day not you just smile say hey i love your find something when you go knock on the door Find something in their yard to comment about. Knock on the door. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Jay Nelson with EXP. Listen, um, I came by to talk about the book drive or whatever or the haircut thing. But, and, you know, nice to meet you. I love this, uh, this you know, the way you've done the, the mulch beds. They're beautiful. You know, just, just go make a friend. I know it's hard. I know door knocking's not easy, guys. And I know it can you, people can slam it in your face, but you're not – if, if you have people, all you're looking for is, you know, one out of 10 to potentially think, man, Vicky's a cool girl. You know, some people just want to make more friends and say, hey, let's be friends on social media. And, oh, that's cool. Well, now I know Vicky. So, you know, uh, you know, and Chris, go ahead. Chris is talking. Chris O'Neill. That's a great idea. What about taking a buddy? I want Chris to talk about that. <laughs> I mean, if you take somebody with you, um, I know uh, there's – a couple of different things that a lot of people do fear when they do door knocking, especially nowadays. One is obviously safety, right? That's one. But the other one is just the fear of rejection. People don't like to have, be rejected whenever they're face to face with somebody. Yeah, you know, even more so going to, you know, the phones, right? Jay and I were talking about this recently. Um, you know, pick up the phone, you know, just not to be afraid of, just do it. Um, but it's the same conversation, not the same conversation, but there's more of that level in, of anxiety whenever you're in front of someone, you know, coming from the car business, rejection was a, a constant thing. So you kind of just kind of, over time, you just kind of get used to it um, in, a, in a way where it stings a little less. Um, but take somebody with you who's done it before, right? So just reach out to another agent in your area or even maybe somebody not in your area, right? If you're wanting to farm a specific area and just say, hey, you know, if whatever I get here, I'll, you know, we'll, referral, right? I'll give you 20% of any of the clients I locked down from this area, right? However you want to do that, just come and spend the day with me walking around and we can talk and, you know, in, in return to you, I'll give you a little cut. Or you could do a trade. You could say, hey, listen, come with I me. Or yeah. not. Let's say both, both agents. I mean, look, uh, it, here's the thing. When you're a serious, like, like if somebody called me and said, hey, Jay, will you come knock doors with me? I literally just don't have the bandwidth to do it. So I, I don't have time for anybody to say, hey, come knock doors with me. I just don't. And I'm not trying. But let's say you got another newer agent and both of y'all are new at this. 
Well, then, you know, you say, hey, look, why don't you come knock, you know, for an hour in my neighborhood with me? I'll go knock an hour with you. There's no pressure on you knocking with them because, you know, you're just going to be there to be moral support and kind of observe and learn. And then, and then, or maybe y'all trade open houses and say, look, let's go knock doors for my open house and do this lunch, this pre, you know, open house lunch thing in my neighborhood or wherever you're doing an open house. Let's say it's not your neighborhood. It's just the house you got a listing in. And then you trade off and do that with somebody else. So you can have a little partner and, and then you're giving, helping them in their neighborhood and you're helping them in theirs. And then y'all get it figured out and then you can do it individually. Let's keep going with questions. Let's go about 10 more minutes, guys. I hope everybody's getting a lot out of this. I know it, it, it's a lot of work. I get it. Um, you know, we need to, as agents, um, we need to continue to remember, I'm not, I'm not looking for ways to make things necessarily always the easiest. I'm looking for ways to make things where they're effective to where, you know, your kids eat, you know, and you make sales. So sometimes some of the stuff we're coaching is not easy. It is hard to do, but it, a lot of it's simple, but it just takes the effort. So uh, anybody else got any questions? Go ahead and turn your mic on or suggestions and say, hey. So I hey, Jay. Go ahead, Tracy. Hey, Tracy, go ahead. Tracy. I didn't mean to hit that. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> so another uh, kind of going back to the, the dog pictures uh, thing, if you can get in and even do like a co-marketing brand or something like that with a local lender, they would help pay for a photographer. But it's you don't just have to do that. You can do Christmas, bring in Santa, Easter, bring in, you know, the bunny. Halloween, bring in a, you know, a, one of these people who dress up, um, you know, as something actually scary or whatever, you know, as professional makeup artist or whatever, um, you know, those kind of things on Halloween night, you know, beforehand. So I think uh, there's a lot of, a lot of things you can do. Plus anything you do that you can turn around and have, um, you know, your marketing material on like the back of their postcard, right? You use something like send out cards, you have a front with their picture stuff on it and on the back you have all your contact another another neighborhood fun idea would be to create a list of trades and services that are within that neighborhood you know and it, as a realtor it's super easy to say hey i'm in real estate and i live around here i like to use local people and we've got a lot of houses so you know, what do you do in our community? Are you a plumber? Are you a roofer? Are you a landscaper? Are you a teacher? Are you a, you know, do you teach guitar, music, piano, whatever, whatever people do. Are you a nail salon, yeah. hair cutter? And then create that entire database for the neighborhood. Just say, hey, I'm, I'm going to distribute this to the neighborhood so that people here locally know, you know, what other people in here do and, that you know, hopefully awesome it'll idea. boost your business and kind of do that as a way of saying thankfulness, Thanksgiving maybe this fall. Um, and then it gives you a reason to follow up as well, right? Like, hey, I heard you were da 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 da. And that makes you the mayor of the neighborhood because you can start connecting people to people. I love um, that, Amber. And then have a block party afterwards. Like, hey, you're all invited. Uh, let's go meet some, you know, whatever. So there's a couple steps there. That's something that we've kind of talked about doing here. We have not done it yet because again, I don't live in a neighborhood. So I'm trying to figure out, is it weird to like, do that in a neighborhood that I don't particularly live in or do I just create my own neighborhood? I mean, Jay, you've come out to our place before, you know, kind of how we live. So I, mean, I love somebody, I love somebody's ideas on that. You know what? I, you could totally do it on the community. You know, yeah. I mean, you just because look, the neighborhood just means the houses are more condensed. It's still mm -hmm. a neighborhood where the geographic area, you could do sure. a Facebook target, and say, hey, I'm running a, you know, I'm trying to find out anybody that does. I could just do old Mount Nora Road, like just do my whole long road. There's yeah, probably be, uh, 80 yeah. to 150 houses there. Hey, Mercedes is asking, how could I do something for a neighborhood I'm moving out of? I know people in this neighborhood, but I'm moving. So does anybody have any suggestions for that? 
And while y'all are thinking about this, I want to yeah, – I, I, I have a suggestion. All right, hang on one second, Gloria. I want – right now, while we got 46 agents on here, guys, please, let's start being committed to this time to train. Look, the, the, I want every one of y'all to commit to y'all schedule that you're going to put an hour in a week of training. The, the ideas, the collaboration – the energy that we get by y'all being here. And I want, I want to make another challenge. If you have, I want you to get one other realtor on here next week. I want a hundred agents on here for next week's training. I just want to challenge everybody to be more committed to training. So go ahead, Glory. What's your idea for moving out of the neighborhood? And then we're going to okay. wrap. <clears throat> okay. Thanks. Two suggestions. I, I just want to say as far as moving out, if you put together an amazing move out team, like, you know, you've got a fantastic mover, maybe you have somebody that comes in and declutters and packs up. I mean, anything that makes your move easier, um, then you could put together, you know, easy move out, um, you know, plan and share that with people in the community. Yeah, no, I think that's great. The other thing I was going to say. Hey, is, uh, Go ahead, Gloria. I love the I love the community idea about you know finding out who does what and I just wanted to add to that and say that one year what I did in my community I was farming is I put out an opportunity for anybody that was an entrepreneur to do a kind of a business uh, or like a, a gift expo right before the holidays so everybody in the community that sold something that could be purchased as a gift for the holidays we did like a a holiday bazaar and then we supported those local businesses and people could come and shop for Christmas presents and we did that like the day after Thanksgiving or like two days after Thanksgiving no that's great that's great and Dina Powers said she's got a limited budget um, oh a neighborhood potluck I love this idea Dina uh, you know that you don't have to provide the food but you invite a Santa you invite a photographer for the puppy pics I mean that's great I think that's a great idea you know Figure out what works for you. Last thing I want to say, throw a Christmas party, guys. Every single one of y'all, I say this every year to agents. I'm like, why you have to throw a Christmas party? It's not about sometimes how many people show up. I don't care if you're throwing one at your apartment and you don't even own a house, okay? It doesn't matter, okay? Stop thinking like that, okay? It's about inviting people that you know, love, and care about to a party that you're throwing. It's the thought that counts, okay? And also, Amber said it's good to go to the parties. Exactly. Go to Christmas parties. Go meet people. You know, make the rounds and, and do what you can. I know a lot of y'all have small kids. I get it. You know what? Everybody's got stuff, okay? But you got to feel it. You know, you got to figure out how to make this work as far as getting in front of more people, building more relationships, you look, it's all about making friends, selling houses. How can you get in front of more people, guys? Shake hands, kiss babies. That's what me and Corey Williams say all the time. How many are you shaking hands and kissing babies and building relationships? That's how you become a great realtor, guys. So whatever it takes to be able to get that done, get on these trainings every week, football parties. Everybody's throwing in comments here. Football parties, Christmas parties, go to parties, go to – events meet people get out there you can't sell houses sitting at your house okay you got to get out in the community and make a difference and meet people and add value to their lives come with an add value guys y'all have a great rest of the week and i want everybody to start being so committed guys get on some of these uh these these webinars uh page turner here in, in about 30 minutes uh actually kathy carter's doing the the webinar here in 30 minutes Guys, get some agents on these webinars so they can learn about EXP and how freaking awesome it is. Start inviting. I do the, the Sunday night, the, the Wednesday night webinar. Uh, Sean Richardson is about to start doing one on Thursday nights. So, guys, listen, get people on these webinars and commit to being on the trainings on Tuesday morning. Y'all have a great week. Love you guys. Yeehaw. And uh, let's go change the world with EXP. Y'all have a good one. Bye, everybody.